Uh, today's video is going to be me going through the first bullet point of addiction. It is arguably the, I'd say, top three easiest um, bullet points in the whole spec. It's not really going to take me that long. I'm literally defining four terms. So I am going to space this video out a little bit by just introducing you to the addiction topic because it, it is the last topic that we are looking at. You know, we, um, or what, yeah, one of the last topics that we look at. Um, <clears throat> it is... Uh, it is an interesting one, I think. It's, it's, it's one of the more interesting ones. So this is the addiction module. You've got six bullet points, but don't be fooled by that because I think in reality there's actually about nine bullet points worth of information here. So the first bullet point that we're going to be looking at today is simply describing these four terms. Physical dependence, psychological dependence, what tolerance is and what withdrawal syndrome is as well. And if you have a look, it, all it is asking you to do is to describe these addiction terms. So it's, all we're looking at here is AO1. There's no AO2 really. There's certainly not any AO3 in this case. We do look at the five risk factors. Um, if you were in my classes, you are going to be doing uh, presentations to the rest of the class on these. So the five risk factors are genetics, stress, personality, family influence, uh, family influences, and peers. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, each of these alone could be a separate bullet point, but there's five in this one bullet point. So it's quite a lot that you actually need to know. We look at both biological and learning theory exp explanations for nicotine. So again, that's two bullet points in one. Gambling addiction, we look at the learning theory and cognitive theory for gambling addiction. It's really interesting, that one. Quite complex, but really interesting. We look at several ways of how to reduce addiction before looking at two separate theories about models of behavioral change. Um, the last bullet point you actually look at, a really, really interesting one, is looking at, okay, well, people say they're going to change behavior. Why do some people change behavior and why don't some people change behavior after saying that they are going to? So really different, really varied, quite um, very technical, this one, by the way. So you're going to need to be quite hot on your A1. But anyway, I'm guessing you are here not for me going through addiction. You are here for me going through the four terms. Now, as I say, super easy super easy so the first term we're going to look at is what physical dependency is and you need to know all of the key aspects and whilst so far these questions have been remarkably short in the exam you do need to prepare for a little bit more detail so what do we mean by physical dependency we're talking about an addiction well i guess actually we probably need to define what addiction is actually um uh, we all know what addiction is. We all know what addiction is. We all know there's certain types of addictions. But an addiction is almost a compulsive behavior where you are compelled to act in a certain way, um, either through in the ingestation of substances or you have to act in a certain way, i.e. gamble. Um, <clears throat> now, there's, you need to know the two types of dependency. Physical dependency, psychological dependency. Physical dependency is when, and might be worth writing this down, your body literally depends on the substance for survival. Your, your, your body literally depends on the substance for survival. It is a result of long-term use. So one of my current first years, you know who you are, uh, recently told me that her mum was physically dependent on um, nose uh, decongestions. Um, like she had used it so much to clog her nose before she went to bed. Uh, she had used it so much that actually the, the, the doctor, if, correct if I'm wrong, uh, LD, uh, but um, uh, the doctor told her mum that her cells had literally become dependent on them receiving that nose decongestion and you can theoretically get addicted to any substance really um i'm addicted to tea i don't have a tea on me it's because i'm trying to beat my addiction but um i have that as a result of daily use for weeks and months to the point where then your body kind of depends on it and a good example of this is <laughs> it's more psychological it's more psychological which i'll come to in a second but i think 
in order to wake me up in the morning, I need a cup of tea. Like, I physically depend on a cup of tea. Whether decaf or calf, I physically depend on that cup of tea. Uh, it's a physiological need for the drug marked by very, very unpleasant withdrawal symptoms when the drug is discontinued. You do need to know about the DTs. The delirium tremors are what people get when you come off certain substances. So if you come off alcohol too quickly or if you come off heroin too quickly, you can actually suffer what's called the DTs, the delirium tremors, and they can actually kill you. If you come off the drug too quickly because your body is physically dependent upon the drug, that would be like me taking away your oxygen. Right, you you are phys- you are physically dependent on that oxygen to survive, like the alcohol to survive. That if you come off it too quickly, you will die. So physical dependency is quite important. Um, normal day to day functioning can become reliant on the substance. So in order to get an alcoholic to go to work, they have to have a drink. For example, if you're at that point, you are physically dependent. Um, now, I don't want to get too confusing here but we're gonna look at tolerance in a second. Physical dependency often is seen with tolerance. If, because if you've been having daily use for weeks and months, you will become tolerant to it. And we'll go through that in a couple of slides time, but it is just worth noting those two together that with physical, when you see physical dependence in an individual, it's often marked and accompanied by tolerance, i.e., the individual has to take more of the drug to, to feel the drug because their body is getting used to that drug. And we'll go through the types of tolerance in a second. That's physical dependence. Now, whilst I think I do have a physical dependence for tea, I think my issue is psychological dependence. I don't feel as if my day has started until I've had a cup of tea. If I don't have a cup of tea, so if I have to run out of the house or run to work, for example, and I, I, I somehow forget to make a cup of tea, which never happens, by the way, because it's the first thing I do when I walk down. I make my cup of tea before I feed Bella in the morning. Um, I, I'm uncomfortable. I don't like it. If I don't have a cup of tea, I don't feel right. I, don't, I can't describe it. I don't feel anxious, but I just don't feel right. So this is a condition that exists where the person must take the drug in order to uh, please certain mental and emotional cravings for the drugs. Um, most of you have this with something. I'm, I'm going to guess that most of you do not have a physical dependence for your drug because you don't ingest anything. F- f- like, sorry, you don't have a physical dependence for your phone right my, my phone's right here for example you do like i don't have a you can't have a physical dependence for like you, you can't that that doesn't exist but do you have a psychological dependence for your phone yes if i were to take your phone away from you right i'm not going to have your cells in the body being like where's my phone but am i going to have you psychologically dependent i probably will I probably will. The individual feels they cannot cope with work and social life without a particular drug or their phone. Um, So if I took your phone away from you, as I do every lesson, um, most of you, a lot of you don't like that. A lot of you don't like that. So absence of the drug or phone causes the individual to feel anxious, irritable and depressed. Have a look at these and please note these down. Uh, You need to highlight how they are affected psychologically how they are dependent on the drug psychologically so you want to use psychological characteristics um it causes anxiety causes irritability frustration depression um uh i said anxiousness didn't i um so this is an addiction in the mind not necessarily in the body and it, it can be just as detrimental. Now, can you have a can you have a drug or an addiction where you are physically and psychologically dependent? Yeah, I'd say that's most drug addictions. Most drug addictions, most alcohol addictions, you are both physically dependent on the drug, but you're also psychologically dependent on the drug. Um, but there are some there are some addictions like your phone where it's either just one or the other. So. Um, gambling is gambling is a little bit of both actually gambling is a bit of both but your phone is definitely just psychological now 
Uh, tolerance. Uh, third key term you need to know. We all know what tolerance is. Um, it's the diminishing effect with regular use of the same dose, requiring the user to take more and more drugs in order to get the same effect. I used to drink quite a lot when I was at uni. Uh, I, When I went traveling, I drank every single day and night for 92 days in a row. Um, I would not recommend it. I was very ill afterwards. I wasn't an alcoholic. I wasn't an alcoholic but um, because I was because I was traveling. But during those 92 days, I built a massive tolerance to beer, massive tolerance to beer. In order for me, to, I, I could drink it and not get drunk at all. I could drink 10 pints in two hours and I'd feel a little bit buzzed. You know, again, wasn't an alcoholic because I was traveling and it's, it's a different life. But... I had a massive tolerance for it. Um, and you need to know the three ways in which your body can actually adjust to it. And I will, I will slow this down because it's probably the most complicated part of this point. So the three ways in which you can build tolerance. The first one is metabolic tolerance. Enzymes that are responsible for breaking the drug down just get very good. So for example, um, my enzymes that broke down my alcohol in my, in my body because I was drinking more and more alcohol, I was either producing more enzymes to deal with the alcohol or the enzymes I had were getting brilliant at the job because they were they had constant work. So, and therefore I wasn't feeling, the, the, dr the drug wasn't in my system that much. I would drink the alcohol, for example, and straight, that, that's by the way, that's not alcohol. Um, I would drink the alcohol and the enzymes would get working on it straight away and I just wouldn't feel the alcohol because the alcohol would not be in my system for that long. So this is all to do with enzymes and how effective they are. The second one is all to do with your brain and how your brain adapts to it. So if you keep taking the drug, keep taking the drug, keep taking the drug, one of two things is either going to happen. Either your receptors are going to get less sensitive to the drug, so it takes more of the drug for you to activate the receptors or you're going to have fewer receptors generally but either way the activity of the receptors will quieten down because you're taking so much of the drug you don't need that many receptors so basically you kill off loads of receptors because you don't need that many receptors so in order for you to activate the the 50% of receptors you have you need to take more and more drugs and that leads to tolerance the other one is actually um, learned, learned tolerance. Um, if over those 92 days of drinking, I learn what my level and what my limit of alcohol is, I learn it to a T. And I learned that I learned not to, I learned how to act when I was drunk because I was spending more and more time drunk. Um, I was able to control how I felt, for example, a lot more purely through experience purely through experience so the third one is the result of practice as the person has learned to function normally whilst under the influence of the drug or the alcohol so those are the three types of tolerance but let's say let's say you do what i did after the 90 and you have a detox after 92 days of traveling i came home i was ill for ages um because i withdrew now, that might indicate I was alcoholic, but I wasn't an alcoholic. Uh, my body had become tolerant to it. I was addicted. It, my body was addicted to alcohol, but psychologically I wasn't. You know, I didn't wake up every morning needing to have a drink, but uh, my body had become so used to having alcohol that when I stopped, I entered withdrawal. Now, <clears throat> uh, I was ill for about two weeks. And then and then I was then I was fine, um, but it's marked by unpleasant physical or psychological effects uh, following the discontinued use of the drug. So basically, your body has become so tolerant on the drug, it's so dependent on the drug that when you take that drug away, you will um, you do know by the way. Maybe some of you don't, but a hangover is withdrawal from alcohol. So when you go on a night out and you get drunk. You have like a mini addiction to alcohol. Your body has, has become like, in a, in a much smaller way, kind of addicted to alcohol. So when you wake up the next day, hangovers are essentially alcohol withdrawal. 
So these unpleasant feelings include shakes, tremors, vomiting, blood pressure changes. It depends on the drug, right? So cannabis, for example, has very different withdrawal effects from uh, heroin, for example. Heroin is very different to alcohol. Alcohol is very different from me taking your phone, for example. If I take your phone, I don't really see many people just kind of shaking there in the class because I need my phone. Uh, so it really does depend on the drug. It really does depend on it. Uh, and uh, la, 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 la. Uh, it basically happens within hours, right? Uh, withdrawal can happen within hours of stepping back from the drug. Um, some of you vape, some of you vape that you are addicted to the vape. My, my girlfriend used to vape, um, <clears throat> and it would be <sighs> the whole time. Um, <clears throat> and, and if like she got me to hide it, I hid it in that, in, I hid it in that, uh, book room. Uh, book, book, book case. That's the case. Book, uh, bookcase once. Um, but anyway, anyway, I digress. Two types of withdrawal. First one you've got is uh, acute withdrawal. This happens really quickly. This is this is the first wave of withdrawal that hits you. Um, it's very intense. It's very intense. It's something also worth writing down. Um, it it's this is where the DTs happen. By the way, uh, delirium tremors, they don't happen for all drugs. They happen for um, alcohol. They happen for heroin. They don't happen for weed. Uh, they don't happen for your phone. They don't happen for gambling. Um, so there's, again, you need to know which, uh, a little bit more about the DTs. So you have acute withdrawal. And if you survive that, you have the post-acute withdrawal. And this is where the brain slowly, and it is a slow process, slowly reorganizes itself and rewires itself back to what it was before. Now, I currently know at the time of filming uh, a, a an alcoholic who, um, who hasn't drunk for about, he's not drunk for about two months now. He's not drunk for about two months. Um, he's going to meetings, he's gone to the doctor. Um, he, I think he will, he, he is through the acute withdrawal phase. And so he is now slowly having to, and this is a good term to use, by the way, he's slowly having to redefine his relationship with alcohol, i.e. not have it anymore. You can't have a little bit of heroin if you're, if you used to be a heroin addict, you have to go full stop complete redefine your relationship with it um and so he is currently going through this but it's going to take years months possibly years for his brain to reorganize uh, and rewire itself back to a normal state of functioning that is it for this bullet point um i've made it a lot longer than i had to sorry about delaying um but pretty simple you need to know those four you need to be able to describe those four in the detail i have given you um that's it. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, one more thing I did just want to quickly show you was actually the questions that have come up here. At the time of filming, this these are all the questions that have come up. So a two marker just there. You've got a two marker just here. Uh, personally, I don't care what year you're in. I would expect you these questions to be coming up a bit more regularly now because they haven't been hit that much. So this is probably an important bullet point to wrap your head around. If you if you want to see if you understand the video, maybe have a crack at those two questions just now. But that is everything. See you later.